For more information on the company's forward-looking statements and risk factors, please see our management discussion analysis dated April 30th, 2019, and our year end financials dated April 30th, 2019. And for all public information filings, please visit cedar.com. I will now turn it over to Paul Gezzi, CEO of Control Energy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Control Energy 2018 financial statement call. We are pleased to have you join us on the call. In addition to a review of our fiscal 2018 year, we will also provide an update on our 2019 strategic initiatives and outlook. I am joined on the call by our CFO, Claudio Del Vasto, who will summarize our financial results for 2018. Control Energy is a leader in the energy efficiency sector through IoT, cloud, and SaaS technology. With a disciplined mergers and acquisition strategy combined with organic growth, we provide market-based energy solutions and technology to our customers in order to reduce their overall cost of energy while providing a corresponding reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. The primary market we serve is the commercial, multi-residential, and industrial real estate sector across North America. With more than 100 billion square feet of real estate operating at approximately $2 per square foot in energy cost, this provides us with an approximate 200 billion USD annual energy market, which is growing at twice the rate of inflation. According to the UN, by the year 2030, a building globally will consume up to 50% of the world's energy production. Since our initial RTO in the CSC in August 2016, we have been growing our revenues and executing on our strategic plan. In 2016, our revenue was 1.9 million. In 2017, 6.9 million. Based on our revenue growth from the years 2015 to 2017, we were recognized as Canada's seventh fastest growing startup by the McLean's Profit 500 magazine in 2018. We are pleased to announce record fourth quarter and full year 2018 financial results. Revenue for the year ended December 31st, 2018 was 10.7 million, an increase over the prior year of approximately 56% driven by accretive acquisitions and organic growth. And we entered 2019 on a revenue run rate of approximately $16 million annualized. Our strategic goals generate north of 100 million in revenue annually as a vertically integrated energy solutions and technology company within the next four years. I will now pass it over to our CFO, Claudio Vavasso, to present our financial results in more detail. And once Claudio is completed, I will provide an outlook and update for our 2019 strategic plan. Thanks, Paul. Hello, everyone. This is Claudio Vavasso, CFO of Control Energy. I am pleased to provide you with our financial results for 2018. Revenue for the year ended December 31st, 2018 was 10.7 million, an increase of 3.8 million or 56% over the comparative year. Revenue for the fourth quarter was 4.1 million, up 100% over the comparable quarter of the prior year. The growth in revenue is from a combination of accretive acquisitions and organic growth. Gross profit for the year ended December 31st, 2018 was 6.4 million, an increase of 1.8 million over the comparative year. Gross profit for the quarter was just under 2 million compared to 1.4 million for the fourth quarter of the prior year. Gross margin for the year ended December 31st, 2018 and the fourth quarter was 60% and 48% respectively, which is a decline from the mid 60% range for the comparable period. This was expected by management and simply reflects the adjusted mix of revenue and cost of sales under a growing organization with changing product and service offerings. The fourth quarter gross margin is more accurate is more accurate of a representation of future periods. However, the gross margin will continue to change as new acquisitions are completed. On a dollar basis, the 2018 gross profit reflects strong contributions from the newly acquired businesses. Adjusted EBITDA for the year ended December 31, 2018 was negative $167,572 compared to $30,404 for the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA for the quarter was $200,685 compared to negative $43,737 for the fourth quarter of the prior year. 
the improvement in earnings in the fourth quarter reflects new business activities coming online from the completed 2018 acquisitions along with organic growth. The impact of accretive acquisitions, including Dimex and Sensi, and overall scaling of operations will result in lower operating expenses as a percentage of revenue. That is, with growing revenues, overhead expenses are spread over a much larger operational base. In terms of cash flow, in Q4 2018, we were close to cash flow break even, which is a good outcome given our rapid growth rate. Based on a revenue run rate of 16 million annualized and the addition of our recently announced acquisition, we are in a position to be cash flow positive in 2019. In regards to the balance sheet, we have used debt to fund acquisitions and the, major, and the majority of our debt is unsecured and non-convertible. This provides us with flexibility to add growth while minimizing shareholder dilution. A couple of key subsequent events in connection with our debt facilities. On March 13, 2019, we announced a maturity extension of up to 5.2 million in debentures. And based on most, based on most recent information, the majority of these unit holders will be extending. Based on strong investor demand, the debentures are being extended to October 31st, 2020. As such, the final extended amount total will be reclassified from current liabilities to long-term liabilities in the 2019 first quarter financial statements. Also, subsequent to the December 31st, 2018 year end, the bridge debt financing facility maturity date was extended into 2020. The amount outstanding as at year end is 1,925,000 and currently recorded as current liabilities. As such, the bridge debt financing will be reclassified from current liabilities to long-term liabilities in the 2019 first quarter financial statements. And now I'll turn it over back to Paul. Thank you, Claudio. I would now like to address our 2019 outlook and specifically our activity in the cannabis sector and the Smart Factory Strategic Partnership with Toyota Tusho. Both of these represent opportunities for strong organic growth for control. We'll start with the cannabis sector. Up to 50% of the cost of a cannabis grow operation can be related to energy. Through our solutions and technologies, we provide grow operations the ability to better manage and reduce their overall cost of energy which has a positive impact on reducing grow costs and improving profitability. In addition to energy, grow operations are facing odor and emission challenges. With new potential regulations designed to treat grow operations like the industrial sector, growers are facing much more scrutiny. Through our operating subsidiaries, Ortec and SEMC, we have more than 60 years of combined experience in odor and emission testing and solutions. We anticipate that the cannabis sector could add up to 5 to 10% to our overall revenues for 2019 as a new growth vertical, and it can grow beyond that uh, past 2019. It's, it's a robust vertical that um, we're happy to be participating in. In terms of Toyota Smart Factory Strategic Partnership, in Q1 of 2019, we announced that we entered into a strategic partnership with Toyota Tusho to provide a smart, pack, a smart factory platform to the North American market. The platform is based on the Control Energy Smart Site software as a service technology. The three principal areas of the Smart Factory platform are buildings, utilities, and production. In each of these areas, there is a demand to digitize energy and process and provide real-time feedback to management to reduce costs, improve profitability, and provide insights and visibility for continuous improvement. The potential customer base of any Toyota facility in the automotive and automotive parts sector and any potential affiliated factory where to Toyota may have a business interest. The strategic partnership is targeting more than 200 factories across North America as customers over the next five years where the factory may represent up to 1 million in CapEx spending over that five year period. This represents a significant new organic, uh, organic growth vertical for control. Currently, we are operating three pilots and the results of those pilots will be shared in Q3 2019 
with also our plan to scale the platform into 2019 and beyond. Um, a final comment uh, before we get to questions on DTC eligibility. Uh, we anticipate based on delivering all materials to the regulators uh, that we will have DTC shortly, uh, maybe between one and two weeks. Uh, it's in the hands of the regulators in terms of timing. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time. We'll be now taking some questions. We've received two questions by email and I'll address those now and we'll be taking more uh, over the line and, and through uh, email as well. The first question, is the Smart Factory JV with Toyota expected to increase the run rate of the company past management's forecast? Uh, the answer to that is yes, this is a new organic vertical and we anticipate the start of revenues in Q3 2019 and um, based on the size of the market we're targeting, this would have an improvement uh, to our organic growth and our revenue forecast. Second question, does control stand to benefit from increased business with Toyota's customer base? What is the approximate value of the immediate market and its existing customer base available to control? Um, as previously stated, the strategic partnership is targeting up to 200 factories across North America and each factory may represent approximately 1 million in new CapEx opportunities for control. That's over approximately a five-year period uh, for each factory. Uh, the partnership with Toyota Tusho is not limited to Toyota Tusho uh, plants, but also includes other affiliated plants. And further, we are not limited uh, to the automotive and automotive parts sector and have the ability to target any smart factory opportunity. So that concludes the two questions we've received by emails. Uh, we'll unmute the line if there's yep. any other questions. Sure. Before we unmute the line, we just have a, a call, a question that was submitted to the chat. Uh, just wondering about Control's U.S. entity. What's the relationship with Control's Canadian entity? Why does Yahoo Finance give different markets for the U.S. listing entities and Canadian entities? I'm, I'm not sure what uh, we're referring to in terms of entity. We trade on the OTCB market under symbol K and RLF. Uh, we don't own um, a U.S. Uh, corporation. We do business in the U.S. approximately um, 1.4 million last year uh, in, uh, in U.S. business. Uh, we don't own any entities in the U.S. We are looking at some acquisitions. So hopefully that is more of a question on our trading symbol in the U.S. and our trading platform, but we do trade on the OTCB market of K and RLF. Okay, everyone, I'm, I'm muting everyone so everyone can uh, hopefully uh, submit their questions if you like. Mine's now open. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. We just speak to ask a question. Yeah, just uh, just uh, uh, ask your question, and we'll do our best to answer. <laughs> Feel free, go ahead. I was just trying to clarify the the two hundred Toyota factories. You're saying a million capex each over five years. Uh, so yeah, so we're targeting uh, two hundred factories over the next five years. From our initial analysis, each factory has the approximate value to control of about a million of CapEx over five years. So, you know, a, a factory isn't going to do all of their CapEx in year one. So we look at this as a five-year upgrade cycle to a smart factory. Um, some factories may be more, others may be less. These are the approximate CapEx numbers we've seen in being in a number of large facilities. And, you know, these plants are 50,000 square feet to 250,000 square feet is very large and um, they all need some type of upgrade. You know, the question is when do we get that value into control over time? But it's just to give you a sense of the size of the market that we're targeting. So essentially you could say 200 million over five years. Is, is the potential <laughs> market size, yes. Yes, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Any uh, any other questions? Uh, I have another question about the marijuana companies. Sure. Um, are you doing any outside of Ontario, or are they all in Ontario? How many we are? Uh, so, we have outstating any names of. We are uh, Canada wide, and um, we've also started to talk to some U.S. customers. And uh, the challenge in that sector is, um, as you as you would know, it's a, cons a consolidating sector. It's very competitive. And customers don't want to share what they're doing in their facility, and so we're precluded really from sharing what we're doing uh, using a specific customer's name. But um, it is uh, across Canada and uh, moving into the U.S. All right. I just gonna keep asking questions if nobody else is. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We got time. <laughs> Okay. I was also looking online a lot following energy efficiency and I noticed the government of Canada has been spending or, you know, they're putting a lot of money towards it. Um, do you guys get hired directly by the government at all for things or would it be companies that are getting government grants? Is that how that, that's how that would go? Yeah. So typically the government would allocate funds to say, for example, the not-for-profit or social housing sector. Uh, we would have those uh, groups as customers, and so uh, we would receive the benefit. And really what it does in terms of the government funding it, it provides an accelerator to a capital uh, expenditure or capital improvement, and we would benefit from, from some of that. Although most of our solutions are market-based, we do benefit from um, customers getting money from the government, but it's not a large part of our business. Okay. Okay, so no, no more email questions, and I think uh, we can wrap it up. So thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we look forward to uh, hosting future calls. Have a great day. Thank you.